Hey guys, it's time once again for another project update. In the last video, which was approximately two months ago, I removed all of my old batteries, my old inverter, and my old solar equipment from service. The reason for that was I was upgrading to a new set of inverters, and I took that as an opportunity to completely redesign my entire system. While it has been slow, I've made a lot of progress since then. In today's video, I'm gonna show you where I am at currently with the project. It has been running for about a month and a half, I'd say now. We'll talk about some of the things I still need to complete and some of the things we'll be taking a look at here in the next month or two. And before we get into that, I do wanna note that I now have an official Twitter page. I'm kind of looking for a way that I can get quick updates out that don't necessarily require a video. Um, like when I'm working on stuff, I'd like to be able to take a picture of the setup where it is currently, things that I find, information bits to share. YouTube does have their post feature, but the times I've used it, it hasn't really you know, gotten the audience or worked very well. Um, so I will leave a link down in the video description if you want to check out the new Twitter page. All right, so at the back of the container are the rack mount batteries. And I ended up building a custom rack out of Unistrut or strut channel. Each rack supports four 4U batteries, as you can see with the SOK batteries here. Uh, the bottom shelf has a jack for battery, an EG4, and there's space for two more on the left. And then I've got some room on the bottom there if I want to slide something else in. Uh, so the capacity for this rack is 10 batteries. That's four, eight, and then I can fit two on the top up there. So the SOK rack here shows what I envision each of the shelves looking like when they are completed. That is four batteries. They are all interconnected with two aught gauge cable. This is Windy Nation cable. It's some of the best battery cable I've found so far. Um, they are terminated on UL listed tinned plated lugs. I do have the negative and positive coming in from separate ends of the battery. That way the current is hopefully evenly distributed. Each grouping of four batteries has an HRC class T fuse. So I do envision the second shelf being the same once I get two more batteries. And I did cut these top cables here a little bit too long, unfortunately. Um, but again, here's a close up of the terminations. I've got heat shrink on there, glue filled heat shrink to ensure a moisture tight seal around the crimp. Going straight down the front there. They are properly color coded into the class T fuse. And one last thing to note on the rack batteries is I do need to get some kind of terminal covers on these for safety. Um, the covers it came with don't support the uh, two gauge cable. So I don't know if I can find something out of plastic or I know some of you guys recommend 3D printing things. I don't have a 3D printer, but it definitely needs some sort of covering to prevent any accidents. On the second shelf here, I have a similar setup with the class T fuse. Uh, the negative cable is not cut to the appropriate length yet just because I don't have a battery in that spot and the negative cable would feed up from that side. Um, so I've got my jack per battery. I've got the EG4. Got a skinny connector here connecting these two together. This really needs to be a thicker cable, so I do need to get that replaced. That's more of a temporary setup. Uh, so all in all here, this is 30 kilowatt hours of energy storage. So those batteries are coming down here to a Victron Power In bus bar. And I have the cover loose here so I can show you. This is by far one of the best, one of the best bus bar setups I've used thus far. For the amount of bus bars I've used and tried over the years, I wish I would have just invested in one of these from the start. So you can see the positives come up to the top here. Uh, the negatives are attached down in the back. I love the way it's got these little trays to keep the wires separate, yet it keeps them grouped together. So I know these two wires and these two wires are to the same battery. Um, I have space for two more, which I'm going to be using for the DIY batteries. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and if you need more space than just four of these, um, you can actually stack a number of these together. So you see these tabs are extruding out the left here. And if you have a second one of these, you would simply set uh, these tabs onto the end stud you can see over here. Uh, and this is a 1000 amp rated bus bar. Uh, so again, this is definitely where it's at in terms of bus bars. Uh, so the power comes off of there. The negative is going through a four out jumper here up to my Batrium shunt. I don't have the Batrium shunt connected just yet. It's still a work in progress with the BMS. And then you can see the negative and the positive go up into this enclosure here. And speaking of the enclosure, this is a wireway. It's a five foot long, six by six wireway. That means it is six inches in depth and six inches in height, and then it's five feet in length. So again, the positive is coming up on the right here. It goes up into the disconnect. This is my ABB shunt trip breaker. I did an entire video on how I built this enclosure and designed this out. Uh, two positives come out the bottom. I do have them terminated with ferrules now. That was one recommendation I had from the original build video of this box. Uh, thank you, David Paz. Those conductors come out and they're going up to the inverter. Uh, the main negative comes in the back there. It's going over to a bus bar back there. That's a distributor for the negative connection. Again, two leads coming out of that and going up to the inverters. 
And speaking of inverters, I know it's hard to see, it's a tight space here, but I have a pair of LV6548 by MPP Solar. This is the original LV6548, it is not the V version. Um, they are still looking at my reported issue of the V version consuming excessive amount of power on idle, and so far they don't have a response or a recommendation for that. But they do tell me their engineers are still looking at it, so we'll see what they come up with. So the battery conductors are coming up through some one inch EMT conduit into the bottom of the inverter. I have the AC output coming down a separate one inch conduit. I do not have any AC input. As I've mentioned numerous times, I don't use any AC input with my off-grid inverters. It's all completely off-grid. So we have leg one coming off of this inverter, leg two comes off of this one. We have two neutrals from each inverter that need combined. They are combined with this uh, splicing block here. I think it's called a, a Polaris. It comes in this Polaris style connector here. Uh, line one and line two go up to the circuit breaker. I've got a 60 amp double pole breaker here. Uh, I really should have a 70 amp on a pair of inverters like this per the 80% D rate rule. However, I do have an external disconnect now and that's rated for 60 amps, unfortunately. So until I can find a higher rated disconnect, I'm required to have a 60 amp double pole breaker. You can see some rather crude wiring here for the PV input. I do have two arrays connected, one going to uh, each inverter. The wiring is done this way temporarily. Uh, so this is some 10 gauge THWN coming off of the combiner boxes. It is entering the wireway there on the left. Um, I do want to put a disconnect here between the wireway and the input. I'm just not sure how exactly to do that. So until then, I have this wired as a temporary means. Uh, it's probably going to be a small box here of, uh, what is it, 88 by 30, those midget style fuses that are rated for PV. I don't want to use circuit breakers. I want something that actually carries a PV rating and is hopefully UL listed. Uh, my grounding connection is down here in the back. Everything is bonded except for this wireway, which technically is bonded through the conduits, but it needs to be bonded directly to this lug. So that is something I need to work on as soon as possible. I absolutely love, love, love these inverters. As I've said, the setup is going for about a month to a month and a half now. I've had zero problems running the clothing dryer and starting my almost two ton air conditioning. Everything just runs absolutely flawless. Um, not like the Ames inverter where something kicked on and your lights dimmed constantly. So I really like these LV6548s. And as usual, I'll leave a link to all of these major components in the video description if you wanna check out more information on them. LV6548s, one thing to keep in mind is the massive amount of air they circulate. So in that month and a half, you can see what the filter looks like here on the side. So I do need to get these filters cleaned. And this is an example of why you don't want continuously circulating outside air. So I'm gonna to have to have some sort of air circulation in the space uh, that has a filter on it to prevent stuff like this from happening. In the meantime, if you have an inverter like this, make sure you keep your filters clean. I'll be cleaning this once I complete this video. On the right hand side of the space here, this is where the DIY batteries are going to go. Going to have a smaller Unistrap based rack, about eight or 10 inches coming out from the wall and line those up on top. That's going to be the EVE 280 amp hour and the EVE 230 amp hour battery bank. Again, having the HRC fuse at the combination point and going back to that Victron combiner box. Uh, so the AC output comes down, it goes through my EKM meter down here, kilowatt hour meter. Um, it is turned off right now because the inverters do make a lot of noise, but when I shut it off, it was right around 30 megawatt hours, 30 megawatt hours since I started this project a couple of years ago. Again, all the AC wiring is done with number four THWN conductors. It's exiting through a one inch piece of EMT conduit once again, over to a junction box back there in the back where it exits the container. And that junction box pretty much served as an easy pull point. All right, so that was a lot of talking, but there's a quick update. I am very, very happy with this setup so far. It's been working wonderfully. I can't wait to get the DIY batteries put back so I have the extra storage capacity. So happenings over the next month or two. I have two brand new batteries coming in we're gonna take a look at. One's a 12 volt, one's a 48 volt. I have a charger coming in. We're gonna pull apart that old Ames inverter and see if we can figure out what was wrong with it. A lot of you guys seem to think it was capacitors. Um, it does seem like a very plausible scenario, but that kind of goes above my you know, level of experience there. So we'll see what we can find together. I'm hopefully going to have a video on the EVE 280 amp hour batteries. I finally have a design that I settled on that I think is good. So once I get a prototype of that completed, um, I'll do it a second time and film the second version. Aside from that, it's just the usual project happenings here. So if there's anything you guys want to see or you have any questions, please do let me know. Hit that like button before you go. And as usual, thanks for watching.